scene that we just finished using the mini jet. Now a lot of people that are familiar with these guns really don't have any real practice on how to control that paint like an airbrush artist and artist will use. So, you know, a lot of guys in the automotive field, they just spray on and go, you know. So that's what we want to show you a few of those things that we, techniques that we used while producing that piece. And you saw that I was able to switch colors out relatively fast. And that's one of the cool things about this whole system, you know, with, with the mini jet and why I love it so much. When you're getting ready to switch a color out and to do it quickly, you basically you push that top down so that your air vent's closed. Then I can turn the gun over. I can take that and remove the bottle from it while I got my air going. And I just flip it over and I just blast it out into a receptacle so I can clean it. So I grab my next color. I'm just going to keep the white on it. Turn the gun over onto it. Slide that in. Quarter turn. Flip it back over. Pop my air vent open so I get the airflow. And that quickly I can change a color. Now, what does that do for us? Well, if you're making a living at this and, and you're using it for mural work where you're going to use multiple colors in a constant basis, back and forth, sometimes you've got to go back and forth many, many times. So being able to switch a color out that fast is huge. And you can keep your colors right with you, uh, close at hand when you need to switch colors like that. That's what makes this system so fantastic for using just besides painting on a car jam or something like that. You know, we use these things for murals complete and they're fantastic for that. I'm going to show you a few techniques. We've got a black panel here uh, about how to get a finer line with the gun, okay? So we know that if you have it fanned out, you can cover a large area, as we showed when we were demonstrating on that. But you can also turn this, and it causes your pattern to go from a fan to a circular pattern. That's what we want, and that's more like an airbrush is. Okay, so using this gun like that, and most people have a tendency they want to, you know, you're going to blast out your color, okay? That's absolutely true. To do it tight and fine, where you can actually get in there and work like you are with an airbrush, what you want to do is you want to get very close and you want to pull less pressure, pull less air. That takes a little fine touch with your fingers or you can use this. And this is a, a needle adjustment. So I can screw that in and I can put that in tight and that'll allow the needle to only open up so far. That makes your trigger pull really small. And, and that way you can use that to help you get used to it and control so that you don't overpower and blast a whole lot of paint out. Now, you have a lot more freedom and a lot more control if you learn and teach yourself how to do that by your own hand so that you have the versatility to throttle up if you want to. When you set that adjustment, you're not going to be able to do that. You're only going to be able to pull so far. So if you're just doing fine lines and you haven't gained that gun control to that level yet, that's a good tool to have. Otherwise, I like to keep it back where I've got a good throttle range so that I can change and vary my line if I want to. So, okay, to, to do it like that then, I'm going to get up here. I got my air going just very lightly and I can listen to that air, you see. We'll get up there real close, pulling the trigger. And I'm just going to pull back the trigger and that's going to give me a little stroke. Now this is what you'd want to practice. I'm getting a little breaking in that line, which is Probably got a little bit of tip dry on there. But these are the strokes that you would want to practice right here. There we go. Now they're starting to flow nicely. Now see, I can vary that by backing up a little bit, increasing my paint flow, and I can change the size of those lines. So these are what you want to practice when you want to be able to gain that control to be able to use this like a guy does with an airbrush. This is no different. We do the same thing when we're airbrushing. We do it with an airbrush, we do the same thing, we teach people to practice the strokes so that you can make a nice fade away with it. And you do that by pulling your paint on as you're moving and then releasing that paint while keeping the gun in motion. Because if you stop the gun while paint's flowing, you're gonna get a build up of paint and it's gonna do that. We call those the balls of death. And it's obviously somebody who doesn't have gun control. So you do need to be able to get these down to be able to put them together to create a scene. So. No different from an airbrush, it's the same kind of control. The gun continues to move, you start your paint, you stop your paint, and the gun moves on past to drag it out or fade it away. Okay, so make this tool very, very versatile. You can do this stuff.
So when you go into a fine line, batting it up by backing away, moving back in closer. So you can use this just like you would an airbrush, only on a larger scale. The advantage when you're doing bigger volume, you can do it at a much faster pace because you're throwing a lot more paint. As you can see here, some of the, the things that we're capable of doing with this. Also, I mean, this gun has a lot more versatility than that because this is all on a round pattern, so using it like an airbrush. But I can also turn it to a fan pattern, which is just a half turn with that knob right there. And now I've got a fan. I can do this. This is a fan pattern here. It's almost like calligraphy in a way. It gets thinner. But I can also crank this baby open. So if I want to cover something on a larger scale to do, if I'm doing big skies or whatever, or if I need to use it for working on a fender or something like that, I can throttle this thing open with a nice fan pattern, which will give me different size fans that you can use. So to be able to go from that to this, all in one gun, all just a matter of how you hold it, change the fan pattern to round pattern, how close you far you are from it, and your air pressure to a certain extent. I have found that with, uh, with these bigger spray guns as opposed to a, uh, an airbrush, a lot of times we do fine lines with an airbrush, we will literally cut our air pressure down. You know, we try doing that with these and you know it almost has an opposite effect. We leave our pressure up around 29 pounds or about as high as we can go with it. And uh, from there, it, we seem to be able to do actually finer lines. So it's a little bit different because of the, of the way that the air cap blows around it to hold that pattern in place. So having more air keeps that pattern tighter. So it's different the way, the way an airbrush works. Okay, so now that we've learned some things about the strokes and what we can do and what you need to practice to get this good gun control, when you're ready to shut down your system, this is a really neat little tip here about how to keep your paint under control and in your cup when you're taking it off so you don't have a lot of waste of extra paint and more to have to clean out of the gun. And this works really good. So go ahead and pop your air off and your vent hole still open from when you were painting. So you leave that open, you squeeze the bottle, get a nice pinch on it, push your air cap back in and that leaves it all pinched up. You turn it upside down, pull your trigger and that'll fill up with air and it sucks the paint out of the, the rest of the gun body so that you don't have all that paint buildup in there and it's a nice easy clean out from there. So it saves a lot of effort, time and of course wasted paint. So there you go, the Mini Jet, awesome gun, have fun with it and happy painting.